Hello and welcome to a lesson on simultaneous linear equations. In this lesson I'll begin by showing you how to solve a pair of simultaneous linear equations graphically and then we look for the main part of the lesson at how to solve them algebraically. And finally when we get to our fourth example we'll go back to the pair of equations that I solved graphically to show that we get the same answer. To begin then we're going to look at a graphical method for solving simultaneous linear equations and to do that I'm going to call up autograph and we're going to look at the equations of x plus 2y equals 2 and 5x minus 6y equals 26. Now if I ask autograph to plot that first equation x plus 2y equals 2 I get a line and every point on that line is a solution to that equation. The coordinates of every point. Let's take that point there for instance. x is 2, y is 0. And you can see if we put x is 2 and y is 0, that equation is satisfied. 2 plus 0 is 2. What if I ask for this second equation here? 5x minus 6y is 26. 5x minus 6y equals 26. This time I get a blue line, and every point on this blue line, its coordinates represent a solution to this equation. So, if every point on the blue line is a solution to this equation, and every point on the red line is a solution to this equation, where the lines cross will be a solution to both equations. And looking at the diagram here, it looks to be x is 4 and y is minus 1. Let's check that. If x is 4 and y is minus 1, I've got 2 minus 1s and minus 2. 4 minus 2 does give me 2. If x is 4, 5 4s are 20. If y is minus 1, minus 6 times minus 1 is plus 6, and 20 plus 6 is 26. So indeed, both equations are satisfied. And that's how we solve simultaneous linear equations graphically. We plot the graphs of the equations and we look to find the point of intersection of the two lines that result. Right, we'll now move on to look at algebraic methods for solving simultaneous equations. And by the time we get to our fourth and final example, we'll come back to the one we've just done. Example 1. 5x plus 2y is equal to 19. 4x plus 3y is equal to 18. Now what we're going to be using is something called the elimination method. We're going to eliminate y from these equations. But before we can do that, we need the same amount of y in each equation. So I'm going to take that first equation and multiply it by 3. I'm going to multiply the second equation by 2. Why am I going to do that? Well, because the lowest number that 2 and 3 will go into is 6. So the only way I'm going to get the same number of y's in both these equations is to multiply them up until I've got 6y in each equation. So let's multiply equation 1 by 3, and we'll write down what we're doing. 1 times 3. So I multiply everything in the equation by 3. 5x times 3, 15x plus 2y times 3 is plus 6y equals 19 times 3 is 57 and we call that one equation 3. Now the second one I'm going to multiply by 2 so let's write down what we're doing equation 2 multiplied by 2. 4x times 2 is 8x plus 3y times 2 is plus 6y and 18 times 2 is 36. And we'll call that one equation 4. Now I'm ready to eliminate y. I've got 6y, the same amount in both equations. So if I subtract one from the other, the y's will disappear. Something take away itself disappears. So I could say equation 4 take away equation 3, or equation 3 take away equation 4. Well, I'm going to choose equation 3 take away equation 4. Why am I choosing it that way? Well, 15x minus 8x is 7x. If I'd done it the other way, I'd have got minus 7x. And although we need to be able to cope with minus signs, we don't introduce them if we don't have to. 
So let's go over it again. 15x minus 8x is 7x. 6y take away itself disappears. Equals 57 take away 36 is 21. So 7x is 21. The y's have gone. So x is 21 divided by 7. So x is equal to 3. And we're halfway there now. We've got one solution, x equals 3. I now need to find y. So what we do now is we substitute for x, sub for x, in any of the original equations, 1, 2, 3, or 4. Well, let's say equation 1. One with smaller numbers than 3 and 4. So I replace the x with the value that I found, which is 3. So instead of 5x, it's 5 threes. Plus 2y is equal to 19. 5 threes are 15, so I've got 15 plus 2y is equal to 19. So 2y is 19 minus 15. 2y is equal to 4. So y is equal to 4 divided by 2, which is 2. And that completes the answer. We now have the full solution, x equals 3 and y equals 2. Moving on now to example 2. 3x minus 4y equals 26. 4x minus 2y equals 18. The subtle difference between this pair of equations and the last example is that the terms in y are both negative this time. But we take the same approach. I'm looking to get the same number of y's. I'm not worried about the signs at this stage. I want the same number of y's in each equation. Now this time I won't have to multiply both of them because I've got 4 in the top equation, 2 in the bottom. Well, the lowest number 2 and 4 will go into is 4, and I've already got 4 in equation 1. So all I need to do is multiply equation 2 by 2. So equation 2 multiplied by 2. 4x times 2 is 8x. And minus 2y times 2 is minus 4y. Because we only multiply by positive numbers, the signs never change. So whatever sign is there just gets repeated. Equals 18 times 2 is 36. And we call that one equation 3. Now what I'm going to do is look at equations 1 and 3 because they've both got 4y in. Or to be precise, both got minus 4y in. But again, something take away itself disappears. Minus 4y take away minus 4y is 0. It's gone. So what I'm going to do is say equation 3 minus equation 1. So we're subtracting again. 8x minus 3x is 5x. And again, I chose to do 3 minus 1 rather than 1 minus 3 to avoid a negative. I didn't want to say 3x take away 8x is minus 5x. So we say an equation 3 take away equation 1. Minus 4y take away minus 4y disappears. 36 minus 26 is 10. So 5x equals 10. We've eliminated the y's. So x is equal to 10 divided by 5, which means that x is equal to 2. Now we substitute in one of the equations to find y. So let's say substitute for x in equation 1. So instead of 3x, I've got 3 lots of 2. Minus 4y equals 26. So that's 6 minus 4y equals 26. Minus 4y is equal to, taking the 6 to the other side, it becomes 26 minus 6. So minus 4y is equal to 20. Now to find y, I simply divide by how many y's I have, minus 4 of them. So it's 20 divided by minus 4. Now plus divided by a minus is a minus, and 20 divided by 4 is 5. So 20 divided by minus 4 is minus 5. 
and that completes the solution x equals 2 y equals minus 5. Let's move along to a third example 4x minus 3y equals 0 2x plus 5y equals 13. This example is subtly different again in that the signs of the y's this time are different. Well before I can do anything I need to get the same amount in each equation. So I'm going to multiply the first equation by 5 and the second equation by 3 because the lowest number 3 and 5 will go into is 15. So equation 1 multiplied by 5. 4x times 5 is 20x, minus 3 times 5 is minus 15y, equals 0 times 5 is still 0, and that becomes equation 3. Equation 2 multiplied by 3, 2x times 3 is 6x, plus 5y times 3 is plus 15y. 13 times 3 is 39, and that gives me equation 4. Now then, I've got the same amount of y's, 15, but I've got opposite signs. If you've got opposites, the way to get rid of them is to add them together, then they cancel out. 15y add minus 15y is 0, it cancels out. So when we've got opposite signs for the y's, we end up adding the equations rather than subtracting. So what I'm going to do here is say equation 3 plus equation 4. 20x add 6x is 26x. Minus 15y add on plus 15y disappears. And 0 add 39 is 39. So x is equal to 39, divided by the amount of x as we have, 26. So x is equal to 1, and that 26, 26 to make a whole number, there's another 13, so it's 1 and 13, 26. But we can cancel that down to say x is equal to 1 and a half. 13, 26, there's 1 half. Now we substitute for x in one of the original equations. Let's substitute for the one with no negatives in. We'll substitute in equation 2. So we get 2x is 2 lots of 1.5. Well, let me write 1.5 as 3 over 2 as an improper fraction. 2 lots of 1.5 plus 5y is equal to 13. 2 lots of 1 and a half is 3. 3 plus 5y equals 13. So 5y is equal to 13 and when I bring the 3 across it becomes minus 3 which means that 5y is equal to 10. y is equal to 10 divided by 5 so y is equal to 2. And that completes our solution. x is 1 and a half, y is equal to 2. Now to complete the lesson, we'll return to our first example that we solved graphically. x plus 2y equals 2, 5x minus 6y equals 26. I want to get the same amount of y's in both equations. What's the lowest number 2 and 6 will go into? They'll go into 6. So I just need to multiply the first equation by 3. The second equation can stay as it is. So equation 1 multiplied by 3. x times 3 is 3x. Plus 2y times 3 is plus 6y. Equals 2 times 3 is 6. And we call that equation 3. And we're now just looking at equations 2 and 3 that both have 6y in. But they've got opposite signs. How do we make them disappear if they're opposite signs? We add them together. So equation 2 
plus equation 3. 5x plus 3x is 8x. The plus 6y add the minus 6y disappears, that's why we're doing it. And 6 plus 26 is 32. So 8x is 32, which means that x is 32 divided by 8. x is equal to 4. Now we substitute for x in one of the original equations. Substitute for x in 1, say. It could be any of them, but we'll choose 1. x plus 2y equals 2, so I'm just going to write 4 plus 2y equals 2. So 2y is equal to 2, and when I take the 4 to the other side, it becomes minus 4. So 2y is equal to minus 2. To find y, we simply divide by how many y's we have, two of them, and we've got minus 2 divided by 2. Well, a minus divided by a plus is a minus, and 2 divided by 2 is 1. So y is minus 1. So we conclude that x is 4, y is minus 1, which, if you recall, was what we found when we did solve these pair of equations graphically. And that completes example 4. And we can now look at a summary of how we approach these equations algebraically. The first thing we've got to do is multiply the equations as necessary to get the same amount of y in each of them. So we look for the lowest common multiple of the y's. Having done the multiplication, if the amounts of y have the same sign, either both plus or both minus, we subtract one equation from the other to eliminate the y. However, if the amounts of y have opposite signs, we add the equations to eliminate y. Once we've eliminated y, we have a simple little equation just in x that we can solve to find x. And then finally, we substitute for x in any of the equations, and that gives us an equation in y. And we solve that to find y. Right, that brings us to the end of this short lesson on simultaneous linear equations. You'll now find an exercise with five pairs of equations for you to solve.